what we've been trying to do is, is reach agreement on a course of action uh, to recommend to council. And uh, just to let you know that from the staff's perspective, uh, there were a number of reasons why we would have recommended not going forward. And they would have included, included the following. First of all, uh, was there a fatal design flaw that would render the design useless, requiring an expensive redesign of the facility? If that had been the case, then we would be here this evening recommending that we not go forward, that we uh, stop the project. However, the report did not identify a fatal design flaw. Uh, what it did identify is the dome collapse was the collapse was primarily due to issues related to the means and methods of construction. And what has taken place, based on some comments that were made in the report by the consultant, we have uh, we are recommending some minor enhancements to the design, uh, although not required, are being recommended to assure the public that this would be a, a safe facility. What we were asking the members of the team is that, you know, in order for us to move forward, everybody in this room that's on this team has to accept the observations, recommendations from the forensic engineering report and take the necessary action, necessary corrective action. If any one member of that team had not agreed to do that, then we would be here recommending that we not move forward. Uh, all the members have accepted the recommendations and have agreed to take the steps necessary to address the issues and identify the report. In fact, most of that has already been done in terms of uh, uh, additional design that was done uh, for some enhancements. Uh, there, there's been a number of steps taken, and, and just so you know, we have been in discussions. We've exchanged emails with uh, the, the consultant who did the forensic engineering report to share with them what steps were being taken. Uh, and he has indicated that they appear to address all of his concerns that were, were identified in the report. Would the cost of resuming the project be unreasonable and cost prohibitive? And what we found is that with, with everybody working together, that the costs are relatively minimal. Uh, in, in the case of the city, I believe there's about $7,600 of additional costs that, would, that we have to put into the project. Uh, the other members of the team have agreed to absorb additional costs related to their role in this project. And so from that standpoint, we feel that no, the cost for resuming the project would not be unreasonable nor cost prohibitive. The willingness of the members of the team to share in any additional costs associated with resuming the project. And I kind of answered that uh, previously. And uh, the answer to that is yes, they are willing. And if they hadn't been willing, then again, we would be here this evening recommending that we not go forward. Uh, all the team members agreed to absorb a share of the cost. Uh, and one member of the team has actually agreed to contribute an additional almost $13,000 in cash towards additional costs. Uh, our, as I mentioned earlier, our additional costs would be $7,625. So the, the four reasons that we would be here recommending that we not go forward, I think, have been addressed by the team. And, and so based on that, uh, since all these current concerns have been addressed to staff satisfaction, the staff is unaware of any reason why construction should not resume on the dome. The, the four reasons that we would be here recommending that we not go forward, I think, have been addressed by the team. And, and so based on that, uh, since all these current concerns have been addressed to staff satisfaction, the staff is unaware of any reason why construction should not resume on the dome.